you haven't got chance and you haven't got natural selection and you haven't got a combination of those two and you got, you've got none of these theories, what's left? Well, I began to consider the possibility that intelligent design might play a role because even with my illustration of the magnetic chalkboard, it's obvious that the key uh, factor, the key cause involved in arranging the characters to spell a message was a mind, it was an intelligence. So I began to wonder, could, could the same thing be true when we're talking about DNA? Information, after all, is a kind of a mind product. It's something that we know from experience comes from intelligence, not from undirected physics and chemistry or, or, or chance variations. In fact, I love what you say in the book, is the only place it's ever come from has been intelligence from someplace else. In other words, this information doesn't come from any other place but intelligence. Well, that was my intuition going into this. And as I, as I examined the DNA enigma and examined the different uh, naturalistic approaches that had been proposed to explain the origin of information, and then found that each of those uh, approaches in turn failed, that led me back to my initial intuition that maybe intelligence is, is the only thing we know of that can produce information. And, and so for me, that led to a, a question, which is, could the design hypothesis, could the idea of intelligent design be formulated as a rigorous scientific argument? Not just an intuition, but something that could be justified by reference to a standard method of scientific reasoning using a standard scientific method. All right, how did you go about this? Well, I uh, met a man named Charles Thaxton in 1985, and he's the one from whom I first uh, encountered the idea that intelligence may be in some way responsible for the information in DNA. He'd written an important book called The Mystery of Life's Origin, still a classic in the field. And it was a comprehensive critique of theories of the chemical origin of life. But in the epilogue to the book, he not only critiqued the standard theories, he floated an alternative hypothesis. He called it the idea of an intelligent cause. And, and he, for him, this was largely an intuitive thing at this time. It seemed intuitive that you would need a mind to produce information. DNA was full of information. Maybe that was the, the explanation. So a year later, I was off to graduate school. I was intrigued with this idea, but I wasn't convinced yet. And I began, I thought, well, maybe this is what I'd like to study when I start into my PhD research. And so, in fact, I did a dissertation on the whole question of the origin of life. And I had this driving question, could the could the, the, the uh, idea that Thaxton had that intelligence is pointing, or that information is pointing to intelligence, could that be cashed out as a rigorous scientific argument? This has been an ATRI production.